The Brits will celebrate the coronation of King Charles in many weird and wonderful ways on Saturday. After all, a royal occasion brings out Britain at its bonkers best. There's the royal superfans, bedecked in union flags, who've already begun camping outside the Mall, some for the last week, just for a fleeting glimpse of His Majesty and, of course, Camilla, his queen, in the gold state coach. Well, thousands of neighbours will stuff their faces and wave their flags at street parties. Thirsty patriots will guzzle 36 million pints in a weekend of merriment for the monarch, many of them in pubs, especially rebranded as the Charles and Camilla. There are the royal scarecrows, the mad hatters, the transatlantic travellers, and, of course, the great many people who just have a nice long weekend with an extra day off work. Now, you might not share the patriotic fervour that incites our best eccentrics to pay homage to the crown. You might not agree with the monarchy. But the common theme with all the above is that it's celebratory and joyful and a bit of escapism and harmless. If you're making a King Charles mosaic from a thousand tiny Union Jacks and have a tattoo of Camilla on your forehead, I salute you. If you're tired of the Royal Circus and you're spending this weekend in your shed, I understand that too. What I don't understand are people like this. Uh, we just can't be, uh, we can't afford to be wasting money uh, on the royals which operate effectively as parasites. Parasites. Really? 1,600 members of the Republic, well, what I could call Republic, will target the procession by wearing yellow T-shirts. Radical anti-royalist students, known for defacing statues and invading Windsor Castle, one of them is here, are planning events across the country. Many thunderous dissenters are travelling to the capital to wave placards, screaming, not my king. Well, bad news. He's your king, whether you like it or not. And nobody cares about your principal stand. I mean, they might, but just have a day off. It is true that some people aren't that interested in the coronation and don't think we should have a monarchy. It's also true that the large majority of his country in all the recent polls do. And last time I checked, in a democracy, the majority wins. I can guarantee you that categorically nobody wants to see a bunch of attention-seeking protesters ruining the big day. You've got a right to protest, absolutely fundamental right to protest as part of a democracy. Boy, do we know about your right to protest. But to do it in the middle of an enormous national security operation, in front of the world's cameras, when we are showing the very best of our country, the pomp, the pageantry, the majesty, the brilliance of our military armed forces at their very best in the biggest procession we've seen since the Queen's coronation. We should be proud of this. And if you're not proud of it, well, just be quiet. Have a day off. Go and paint your nose green again. Whatever you want to do that gets you through the night, but just let us have this day. And we can have the debate again all over next week if you want. Well, joining me now from the No More Royals movement is Roz Bosner, human rights campaigner, Republican Peter Tatchell, and talk TV presenter Richard Tice, defending the nation <laughs> today. All right, Riz. Mm. You're wearing a t shirt, which I think explains your view. Yeah. No More Royals, which, by the way, you're completely entitled to wear in a free country, and you're totally entitled to not mm -hmm. want a royal family. My question, which I posed in the, in the monologue there, yeah. can't you just have a day off? I mean, seriously, because it's yeah, not it's, just about it's, the monarchy. It's, a fair it's, question, right? it's about you're... the entire world mm -hmm. watching what are often really great days for Britain to show off something which is positive, rather than, for the last few years, an unbelievable yeah, no, no, no. slew I, I totally of negativity. Uh -huh. So. It's disappointing that you think all of us activists are really boring and miserable. It's totally untrue. Well, enlighten um, me. Or just prove my theory. OK. Uh, first of all, you said nobody cares. Um, why am I here if nobody cares? The reality is the public opinion in Britain is totally shifting. We are looking at only a third of young people thinking the monarchy should should continue. Uh, and in the, general, in the general public, we're looking at 52% only 52% support the future of the monarchy. That's the lowest that's ever recorded. Well, only 52% voted stat. to leave the European Union, but we did, because that's called a democracy. Right, and, and the, the, majority. the point here is that's massively fallen within the last de decade. It's clear where this trend is going. Now, I, I do appreciate your point about, um, about joyous events, right? Uh, that's important to me. I really strongly believe that all of the activism we ever do needs to involve giving back to our communities uh, and bringing like, positivity to people's lives. What we do is about creating hope. 
this weekend I'll be in Oxford putting on an event for my community. Uh, there'll be live music, my friend's band is going to play, um, and we'll be chatting to people how they feel about the monarchy, about republicanism, there'll be food, and importantly we'll be raising money for local homelessness charities. I live in well, this incredibly is all right. unequal... This is all extremely virtuous, but of course <laughs> you and your partner Imogen uh, earlier uh, this year jumped into the King's Bed at Windsor Castle That's and posed for photographs while reading Prince Harry's book Spare and eating junk food. <laughs> We've got pictures of you there. What was the what was the purpose of that? So the purpose is to get people talking about get people like you pissed off and shocked, basically. Really? We want people to be talking about higher <laughs> calling Riz. I mean, no, you seem perfectly nice young lady. You've can been I, you've been incredibly I well and if I may say so, expensively educated. Right? Haven't you? You've had a lot of privilege in your life. Uh, with scholarships, absolutely, yes. Right. I, I mean, you've gone to privilege. some extremely expensive schools. So just to talk about the I'm not, I'm not attacking you, by the way. I, I've done the no, same no, with no, my no. kids. That's I'm fine. just saying... I'd, I'd like you to talk about the issue. You have enjoyed a lot of privilege. Absolutely. And yet you seem to be incensed by privilege. So, yeah, that's a really important issue to me. Um, what I'm how do you, how do you square the, the two things? I mean... Yeah, I, I absolutely have had a massive amount of privilege in my life. I'm not upper-class royal rich. So has it ruined I, you, that privilege? Can I just... Could, could we just go to the protest? You did ask me a question about that. Yeah. Uh, the point was to communicate just sort of how... Th this juxtaposition between modern Britain and what that looks like uh, and this archaic, weird set of institutions that just doesn't sit right with that. Um, we wanted to bring attention to the issue because if we hadn't done that, I wouldn't be on this show talking about it and I wouldn't have the opportunity to say to your listeners, we need a republic, we need a better democracy in, the Brit in, in Britain. And Who I'd would really you have like as to go... Can I go into those issues? Because I'd really, really like to talk about the specifics. OK, so... Who would, you do, who would do a better job as president than... Mm -hmm. Elizabeth did as queen for 70 years. Yeah, so I, 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 I appreciate your point. It's absolutely true that there name. are bad Riz, and good politicians. give me a name. I'm not the entirety of Britain. Give me any name will do. Who would be a good president? <laughs> uh, what I want to communicate... I'm here, asking you because in America, we're about to have Biden-Trump for the second yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. No, no, one I, is I a doddery senile point. man who can't remember his own name. The other one is indicted on criminal charges. That is mm -hmm. where I, purely elected officials can I appreciate can take your it. point. If I could just respond to it. Uh, there absolutely are bad and good politicians in any political system. That's true. Mm. There are really good presidents. Uh, Ireland has a really good presidential system. There are many semi-presidential semi systems. There are parliamentary presidential systems. What I want to communicate here is if you're talking about uh, we can't trust the people to vote for their president, you can't call yourself a Democrat. That's fine. That's an argument you're entitled to make, but that does not right. sit with the principles okay. of democracy. Can I just say this last Well, point? hang on. I've given you a good old burst. You can come back in a but, minute. Richard. Riz, you talk about positivity. We've mm -hmm. got billions of people around the world this weekend yeah. who are going to look at Britain at its best, at its finest, at its most historic. Yeah, 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 this yeah. event will create hundreds of millions of pounds to the UK economy. The so royal family, every single year, create in terms of brand value, the latest stats, about two billion a year, mm -hmm. right? The royal family, uh, they give 85% of their assets, which is called the Crown Estate, to the British taxpayer, which they don't have to do, but they do, making huge profits. Mm -hmm. All of the offshore wind farms are on the land owned by yeah. the monarch. It's a billion a year of profits that goes to the British taxpayer. I'm it's aware. one of our greatest global assets People admire it, they respect it, people are wanting to join the Commonwealth, all because yeah. of the royal family. A president Thank who you, comes Richard. every four or five years M creates no brand value at all. First, and then we can talk about presidential systems after. You talked about pride, right? Uh, and I really appreciate you raising that. The reality is only 9% of Britons uh, are a great deal excited about the coronation. What about, what about the deal. billions of people around let the me world? Just, let me just finish that point. Uh, I think we have far better sources of pride in Britain than an unelected Give monarch. me one. There are so many things... Give me one. My community I'm proud of. My, what community? How people have been... What community? Oh, come on, you're being facetious. I, I'm no, proud what you, of how British people What are you have, talking about, your community? What do you mean? I'm talking about the people that I interact with on a day-to-day -day basis. Who is your community? Chris, with the greatest of respect. Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on. Who is your community? What are you... I don't get what you're trying to... I don't know to what you mean. Here. What do you mean, your community? My community is the people around... I know, you're, I know you're, you're, young, you're, young, you're a young student at Oxford, right? Mm -hmm. Having a wonderful education, mm -hmm. hugely expensive education. Again, <laughs> it's great. Good. Well done. Well done on more privilege and elitism. But if let, me ask, you, let me ask you, who is the community that you're talking about? The people in, in, in that city and other the cities... That young live, people that at Oxford University. No, actually, I spend a lot of time working outside of the university. All right, Peter, hang hey, on. Hey, well, let me be, Peter, you'd be very patient. Go ahead. You're intending to protest, aren't you, on Saturday? Yeah. Why? 
a peaceful protest. Yeah. It will not disrupt. People will be able to celebrate. We are a small group around Trafalgar Square. The whole rest of the route will be for people who want to celebrate the coronation. We accept, Why ruin the we, party? We, we accept their right to celebrate and we hope they will respect our right yeah, but to why, protest. But why would you go to someone's dinner party and just jump through the window and start shouting at them while they're having a meal if you didn't agree with what they're eating? No. but So the, why would you do this to a big party for the country when everyone's having a lovely time? Even if you don't agree with it, can't you just take a day off? This party doesn't have money. Let Peter answer. It's because, very simply, Charles is not only king, he is a head of state. Yeah. And even if people believe in him being king, he should not be head of state. Why not? The highest public office in the land should not be inherited with no by a privileged family. Yeah, but Peter, it with... should be open to anyone okay. of merit to be elected by the people. But what executive power does the monarch really have now? Well, it has huge, no. huge reserve power. Peter, no executive power. Peter, it, the answer is none. No Admit executive it, power. Be honest. Every law has to be signed by the monarch. That is purely a functional thing which happens... OK. ..and it's mandate. They don't ever say no. So they have no executive power. What they but, do but, provide is soft power. Yeah. They are one of the few things we have left in this country, frankly, right now, where we are world leaders. There is no monarchy to rival ours. There is nobody in the world, as a nation, that can put on the kind of show we're going to put on on Saturday. And, frankly, I am proud of that. I think it's a great asset to our yeah, country. You, you are whitewashing the reality of, of royalism. Go on. The, the monarch has a secretive power called King's Consent, which has been used over a 1,000 times to block or modify legislation affecting the royals. That is, giving them derogations in terms of employment rights for their 700 servants, giving them derogations for health and safety, giving them derogations for environmental prote protection. They pay no inheritance tax. Charles inherited almost a billion pounds from his mother. He didn't pay a single penny in Why inheritance do you care? tax. What, that is so unfair <laughs> in a society. I think you're going to have... Peter, let me finish, let me finish. No, you talk they, about money. No, that is so unfair. They, to, that is so to unfair. To me, the financial benefit of the monarchy, they wash their face, to put it as a colloquial phrase, where they don't really cost us anything. <coughs> it's estimated they might cost us 1p a day. My, I, that I, is no, not let's true. be very clear. That is not true. The, it, they own the Crown Estate. And they, the should, monarch, and they should not own the Crown Estate. They've owned it that for should, a thousand that years, should belong Peter. to the British people. They, the and they give, is they the give 85 percent of the profits of the Crown Estate, and they give an additional billion pounds a year on the offshore wind farms alone. I really You're talking appreciate you raising that point, Richard, because I'd really like to talk about the economy. Uh, <coughs> recent estimates are 345 million pounds. That's how much the monarchy costs us. Now, yes, some of that is the sovereign grant, which is paid for. It's by... all the sovereign Hang grant. On. Uh, no, it's not actually. There's the sovereign grant, which absolutely you're right. Which comes from for... their comes from Sorry, their can own I just estate. Finish my point, Richard. Uh, yes, the sovereign grant does, does come from the estate. Thank you. Uh, which are not personal property. They uh, belong it's owned to by the, the monarch. Would you just let me finish my point? Uh, however, that cost, um, the sovereign grant, which is far smaller than the £345 million pounds I've quoted, mm. uh, does not include the cost of... But Riz, here's my point again. Oh, point my again. God, let me finish my Riz, point. Riz, Riz, why do you care? I just, I would really Why do you like... care? If you don't agree with the monarchy or the royals, why don't you just find something more interesting to, to, to be angry would about? You, would you just let me finish? Go after me. cost of living crisis That's or whatever what it may I'm be. That's what I'm talking about, Piers. Local government, security, those are all excess costs. The, the cost of the, of the monarchy is far bigger than what it's quoted they to estimate, be. And that is money that right, should be going jump, back into... Let me the just respond to that. Let me just respond. We are having a conversation. It's not a one-way travel. Except we're not, because well, we are, but I'm, a single I'm hosting a show with three guests. It's not just about you. It was revealed today that they reckon the 100,000 tourists coming to London, just London, yep. for this coronation, that all that they will do in the time they're here will bring in 450 million Brilliant. pounds, I'd love to along with all the extra hospitality for the, so, for the capital alone. So, so look, my point, Peter, is this: is that I believe they wash their face financially. In which case, the argument shouldn't be about the money part of it. But it should be made it about the money. You've said well, they're bringing all this money. Yeah, but I, be I believe it reduces is, the yeah, monarchy no, Peter, to rubby is, commercialism. I'm removing the money from the argument because I think the bigger argument is whether we should have an unelected head of state is a more interesting debate to me yeah. than the semantics over the money, which I think they actually pay for themselves. On th that one point, who would you have as president? That will be up for the British people. Well, give me, give me an option. I think Baroness Helena Kennedy, QC, or KC, would be a fine president. Really? And, and in a, the human rights, way, a human rights lawyer who's done exceptional work 
to defend the rights of the British people. And no tourist around the world is going to come and see Baroness that no one's ever heard of. You're talking absolute nonsense. We're talking so, the monarchy clear, the creates tourism that happens billions of pounds of revenue to this great country. Completely of ours. It's incorrect. It's the proudest what, thing we what have. What creates those profits is the royal estates. Uh, All right. We can look at. Yeah, oh, go. No, no tourist Here, actually sees on, the green. Ludicrous. I cannot. No, I cannot go back to your notebook. We haven't got time. Okay. But it's been a good debate. Thank you. you can come back another this time. This hasn't been a debate. You haven't let me finish a single point. Actually, what I want to make actually, clear is you've said done more. Be campaigning done, of the Riz, you've done more talking than any of the other guests. You haven't let me finish. So the words you're looking for are thank you, Piers. This is a delicious And it's been good to see you, Peter. Always good to see you. I'll look out for you on Saturday with your banner. I'll be commenting on this for Fox in America. And if I see you, I'll give you a shout out. There's my friend Peter <laughs> with his not in my name banner. Richard, always good to see you too. Riz, calm down. Count to ten. There'll be another chance. Go back to Oxford. Count yourself lucky. About You're the privileged education insane. you're getting. Shut up. Huh? You're one of the most privileged young ladies in the country. Almost right up there with Prince William. <laughs>